Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. On the 20th of each month, I've held a book club episode with my mum Donna. Hello. So she's joining me again this month to discuss December's choice, which was Winter Solstice by Rosamond Pilcher which is one of our favourite festive book. reads, so we both really enjoyed rereading this. Before we dive into chatting about the book properly, I have to say that there will be spoilers in this discussion because we're assuming if you're watching this that either you've read the book or you don't care about spoilers. <laughs> so if you do care about spoilers, then please don't watch this until you've read Winter Solstice because we don't want to spoil the book for you, but it's really hard to chat about a book properly if you don't give away the plot. It's true. So there will be spoilers ahead. But I absolutely loved reading Winter Solstice again this year. Oh, thank you for so, so much for that choice, because I love this book. I hope you did too out there. Yes. And you loved it, but I just loved it. And it's different every time you reread it a little. Yes. I try to think back to when I first read it. I don't know if you tried to do the same thing. Yes, I did. I mean, the first time, obviously, I was just so caught up in the story and the magic of the story, meeting the characters for the first time. It was one of those magical first reading experiences because I did read it over Christmas, right in the lead up, in fact, to Christmas, which I think is the perfect time it is. It to is. read this book. And I know it's a favourite for many people. A lot of people joining in with us this year have probably read Winter Solstice before, but it's a sort of book a lot enjoy rereading yes. every Christmas and you can see why even though in some ways especially when you first start it and that always takes me aback a bit the beginning yes because it's not Christmas it's no, summer it's not, it, yes it's definitely and not Christmas no so bad so, things happen yes in fact all of the characters in some way are grieving. They are. They have the had beginning. a loss. They've had some kind of loss. Yes. Um, Oscar, of course, has had the biggest, hardest loss, which is what you read at the beginning of the book, and it comes as a real shock, I think. He loses both his wife and his daughter. And it's the daughter that really shocks you, isn't it? It is. It is. Like yeah. In some ways, I think you just assume that with Rosamond Pilcher, she won't do that she won't no yeah. she won't finish off a, 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 a 12 year old yes that's girl. right she's 12 yes yes, yes 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 and that's you know that really hits you yes because she's a lovely terrible. character as well Francesca she's yes. a wonderful little yes, girl and she is. You, you you fall under her spell just yeah. as Elfrida does yeah Elfrida is also grieving for yeah. her lover who died yes Jimbo um, and it was a yes. debilitating illness yes um, yeah so she also is struggling with her own grief yeah. as well as grieving for Francesca and for Oscar for his loss Carrie at the start of yes. the book is also recovering from an unhappy love affair. Yeah. She's grieving the loss of her, uh, the loss of the love of her life, or yes. who she thought of as being the love of her life. And even Lucy, I think, is grieving at the start, the breakup of the marriage of her parents. Yes. She still hasn't recovered from that. No, and I think um, Rosamond Pilcher says something interesting. She says, what a terrible time for this to have happened to the child. And then she says, if there's ever a good time or something like that. Yes. And you really feel that she feels like she's lost her father because, in fact, yes. she has. Yes. He's remarried. He's, yeah. um, she feels unwanted she, in, yeah. by either her mother or her father yeah. and her grandmother, too. She feels yes. abandoned, really by the members of her family. So you start this book and it's so unlikely that these people are going to have a joyful, memorable, magical Christmas. Exactly, and I mean Sam too, actually. Yes, yes you're right. He, he, yeah, his marriage is broken Sam. up and he's yeah. coming from yeah. New York. So he's also reeling yes. from the breakup of a marriage, the loss of his um 
former wife, you know, yeah. she ran off with another man. So they're all heartbroken to some degree or other. And feel frozen in some ways, don't you think? Yes, yes. I think so. Many of them have doubted, perhaps particularly Carrie and Sam, that they will find love again. Yeah. Even Elfrida thinks that that part of her life is over. Yes. Yes. And then she and she's finds the most optimistic spirit, yes. who isn't she? she? Is. I love yes. her marmalade colour hair. <laughs> oh, I loved Elfrida. Yeah, she's Part of wonderful. what makes this book so special is I really love so many of the characters. Yes. All the ones you're meant to like. Yes, they're I all love. They're all wonderful yes. in their own way. Yes, they yes. are. And they're such generous people. And I think Elfrida is at the heart and soul of this yes. book. <laughs> At one point, Oscar says to her, you seem to carry joy with you wherever you go. And he thanks her for returning the hope to his life, the possibility of joy, mm -hmm. um, the ability to somehow keep living and yeah. find some happiness and again. Go forward. Go and move forward. forward. That's right. By yes. the end of the book... They've all moved forward. They have. They've they all have. come to some degree of acceptance and some looking forward to the future. Very much. Yeah. Very much. Which is really special. And I think in some ways that's why this is such a magical Christmas book because everyone enters Christmas not always in the happiest frame no. of mind. You know, no. especially perhaps this year, it's been such a difficult yeah. year. For so many people, yeah. you know, you don't know what people might be struggling with exactly. at Christmas time, which is a time in general where you're expected to be happy and to celebrate Christmas. That can be really hard for people to it have can, those expectations. Fact, they decide to have, basically have a, 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 a sort of non-Christmas, and in yeah. fact, it doesn't work out no, like that at but, all. No, they. They've decided, Alfreda and Oscar, that they won't have a Christmas. No, no, no decorations. No decorations, no tree, no, tree, no turkey. Yes. It's just about getting through the season. Yeah. And in fact, they end up with a house full of unexpected visitors. Yes, a party. A, a party, wonderful Christmas a wonderful party. Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, youth in the house. Yes. Laughter, life, happiness. Suddenly, a Christmas miracle, in fact. Yes, it is. Happens. And there is actually a Christmas... Mm. There's a couple of Christmas miracles in, in this book, too. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's lovely. There's a gentle death with... Um, mm. Yeah, Major... Um, Billy, Billy, Billy Croft or something yes, like yes, that. That's Croft, right, I remember. That's right. Something like or, that. It's, it, that one's done, um, you know, out of the book, as it yes, were. Yes, off camera, so, yes, off stage, so yes. to speak. Yes. But Still, it, it, he, he actually enables things to happen so positively. He does. By giving mm -hmm. them the house that yes. they've lived in. Yes. And isn't she marvellous at houses? Oh, she is. Oh. I mean, that's one of my favourite things yes. about all of Rosamund Pilcher's books that I've read so far. Houses and homes, real homes. Yeah are at the heart of her stories. They really are. Coming Home is another favourite of hers. Yes. I love this one. Yes. And A House, A Home is central to this book too, really important. And so often the characters are going back to a childhood home or a home yes. remembered. And that's what Oscar does. He returns to Scotland Yeah. Um, in the midst of... His, you know, his worst grief, he yeah. takes Alfreda with him, they go back to Scotland, and he returns to his childhood neighbourhood. He does, to where his grandmother lived, where he visited yes. as a child, and many happy memories. Yes. Not to his grandmother's house, which is now this hotel, mm. it's been shut up, but to the estate house. Yes. But the descriptions of that house are wonderful. Mm. I want to sit in that drawing room, yes. that light-filled drawing yes. room, with the fireplace at one end and the yeah. bow window at the other. Beautiful. And they're right in the midst of this charming little village. Yes, so much they to can see. Watch all the comings yes. and goings. And as much as they don't want to become a part of that community, they want to isolate themselves mm. and recover from his terrible loss and yeah. their joint, their shared grief yeah. 
um, they in fact find themselves drawn into the community. And there are some lovely secondary characters oh, in the I, book too. I love the, the reverend yes, and his wife, for wonderful. instance. And really well done, the, the son, Rory. Yes. A lovely sort of yes. teenage gap year yes. student. And that's it helps really Lucy well done so, so much. much. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's another strength of Rosamond Pilcher, is she writes all different ages yeah, she really does. of character so well. And that's really shown in Winter Solstice. She writes older characters Brilliantly, I mean that's a strength through so many of her yes. books, like The Shell Seekers, yes, another favorite. Yeah, there's such a strong older female character. Yeah. in yeah. that book. Same in September. Yes. Yeah. And Winter Solstice, I love this depiction of a relationship between two people who thought they maybe would would never find love again, or oh, thought yeah. that had gone out of their lives, but in fact. In unlikely circumstances, they do find each other. But it feels other. believable, doesn't it? It's it does. It's very well done. It's, it, it it's, is. It's tastefully done, one can say as well. Yes, it is. And, and yeah. it's actually just, it, it feels very right, it, very yeah. believable. And it does feel real. Mm. I think she writes such generous, heartwarming characters, but they also do feel real. They feel they like do. people you want to meet yeah. in real life. You'd like a hope of meeting. meeting. Yes. yes. In fact, it, it, it's a very hopeful book for the reader as well. Mm. You know, yes. if you are going through a hard time, this book, I think, could really give you yes. this feeling of, oh, well, the, this too shall pass. You know, yes. I just have to have the courage to keep going and yes. find joy exactly. again. Exactly. And yeah. Alfreda says that at some point mm. in the book. Essentially, she says, don't lose faith, don't yeah. lose hope. You don't know what wonderful yeah. surprise is just around the corner. Yes. Although yes. there can be bad things around the corner as well, there also can be wonderful surprises, yes. life-changing moments. And it, there's so many interesting quirks in the book, like the bit where what she thinks is her insurance for her old age, yes. which was this lovely... Painting, painting by she, a David Wilkie, who is a real he's a real artist. artist yeah. Yes, and it, I think that was so well done. Mm. But it, that turns out to be quite. She's she's not. Um, she's put her faith there in the wrong thing because, yeah. in fact, it's not. It's just a copy. Yeah. But she gets to keep it because she's always loved this painting. But in fact, a little battered old yeah. clock that yeah. she's. That turns out actually yes. to be worth the other eight. Christmas yes. miracle. The other that Christmas miracle. Eighty thousand. Yes. 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 Um, that enables her and Oscar to renovate this yeah. new home that they move into and have a happy life. And yes, I mean perhaps those parts of the plot stretch the imagination a little bit, and yet somehow you believe it. I think yes. what's wonderful about her books is they create this world. Yes. And as the reader, you feel yourself entirely drawn in. You are. You're and you accept up. these things that happen. And in a way, it's true too. I mean, all of those things are condensed into a few days, which is perhaps a more unbelievable part yes. of the story. Yes. But life does have its ups and downs. It does. It does. And, and she shows that so well and, and I, somehow you you believe it all. you do and don't you find you it you believe it because Elfrida is such a strong upbeat person that yes the first place we meet her in she's moved out of London after the death of her partner yeah and she's moved to this little Hampshire village and it's so well done she's in a terraced house an old yeah. railway cottage they yeah. do it brilliantly yes they really do I love all the descriptions of the houses I yeah. mean particularly the one in Scotland and it really yeah. makes me want to travel to that part <gasps> of Doesn't Scotland. It? Yes. Yes, or other than Pilcher. Not in winter though. No, me, no, no <laughs> not in winter. <laughs> yeah. but, <I> <laughs> so. <laughs> but most of her books incorporate either Cornwall or Scotland mm -hmm. or both. I love that mm -hmm. this one has both because Elfrida has a little jaunt to Cornwall. It's at lovely the start that of the bit, book, isn't it? Which is a oh. lovely part of the book, if, if not so wintry. Yeah. It is still lovely. Yeah. But once they get to Scotland, in some ways, that feels like when the book really begins for me in terms of my rereading it. Yes. That's yes. when I feel 
oh yes, now we're getting to the Christmas part. This is all the bit that I really relish reading. Yes, I agree with you year. totally. I mean, I do love that because we've visited that area. We know it a little in Cornwall. In Cornwall. Yes. And I, I do love that bit because of that. And it also, it's a lovely part of it, but it feels yeah. a little bit extra, doesn't it? it it's yes. not the central push exactly. of it. Exactly. Mm. No, it's true. But you're right. We have, we've been to the Carbus Bay Hotel in Cornwall, which yes, apparently we Rosamond to... Pilcher had her, was it her 50th her wedding anniversary, her golden wedding. wedding. Yes. yes, yes. Which was quite special yeah. to be in the same place. place so she loved to go to, see the same Cornish views. And yeah. another fact about Cornwall that we discovered, which was fascinating, one of the last times we went, was that Talent House, which of course is where Virginia Wolf's family went when she was a young yes. girl. Yes. She and um, Vanessa yeah. and had such happy summers there. Such happy summers, mm-hmm. happy remembered summers. But there's also a connection to Rosamond Pilcher yes. through that house. Would yes. you say what it is? Well, you found this out. It's actually um, her husband. Um, his grandparents were the pe- somebody who owned the house after um, the, the Stevens, know, the Stevens as they were. Then. Yes, um, yeah. left it, and oh. um, he had many happy childhood memories of visiting the same house, <laughs> which I think is amazing. Yeah. Unfortunately, now we did go there; we were lucky enough to yes. to find it and and go stand but it's outside. Also the but it's all flat. Now yes, and it's and not it's, quite the same. The view is still glorious. Yes, but you, you can, can still you can, see the lighthouse. You can. Yeah, you can. Yes. But it, but you can. It feels sort of to connect two very very different writers. Yes, but both of them having given people so much pleasure. Mm. I think that's and really Cornwall something. And having been influential mm. to both of them. Yeah, it's yeah. somehow special too. And I always love finding unexpected connections like that. It, it's wonderful. And she talks writers. about. Um, when she's there for her golden wedding, she walks along um, the walk between Carbers Bay and St. Ives, and we, and we did, did that. that. Yes, yes. it's very yes. special. So, yeah. yes, we've done a bit of Rosamond Pilcher's Cornwall, yes. and Winter Solstice makes me want to do a bit of her Scotland oh, definitely. as well, because she lived in Scotland too, yeah. loved it, and writes so well. I think lived a lot of Scotland. her adult life in yes, Scotland. Yes, I think that she was did, didn't she? she? Herself. Yeah. Um, yes, and I, I, she's such a good writer on place. She is. She and, is. and the landscape as well, which I think is fabulous. I wanted to read oh, yeah. just a little extract, which is from Lucy's diary. Lucy is the young girl who comes to stay. She's 14, She's 14, I think, yes. yes. And she writes in her diary every day. And I yeah. found her a very endearing Love character. Yes. Yeah. But this is a little passage that shows how far from their expectations the Christmas turned out <laughs> to be. As we were saying, Oscar and Elfrida thought they wouldn't have a Christmas no. at all. No decorations. Well, in fact, they do. And Lucy gets involved in tidying up the beautiful old dining room so that they can use it for Christmas Day dinner as a sort of surprise. But she ends up having to let the surprise out a bit early because it turns out to be the perfect place for the Christmas tree. So Lucy writes, I didn't want anybody to know about it so that it would be a surprise. But just before lunch, Carrie and Sam got back with the Christmas tree and there was a great discussion as to where we should put it. We thought the sitting room, but Elfrida's having this party on Saturday and there will be quite a lot of people and she thought it might take up too much space. Then Oscar suggested the landing, but there's going to be a table there for drinks and it would get in the way of people going up and down stairs. So then I had to admit about the dining room and they all trooped downstairs to inspect what we had been doing and it was lovely because everybody was thrilled and it all smelt polishy and Elfrida said she had no idea the dining room could ever look so festive. And of course, that was exactly the right place for the tree. So Sam went out and we brought it in and he'd bought a sort of stand for it as well so that made everything much easier. 
and Elfrida fe fetched her red silk shawl from her bed and draped it around the stand to hide the raw wood and the nails and it looked beautiful and is a lovely shape and size. I love the smell of trees coming indoors. It's like pine essence for the bath. In the afternoon, Oscar collected all the decorations we'd bought and we tied them on the tree and Sam fixed the lights and the star on the top branch. And Elfrida produced a whole roll of lovely tartan ribbon she'd bought for tying up her presents, but she said sticky tape would be just as good. So we cut it and made lovely bows and put them all over the tree. And with the tinsel and the lights turned on, it is the prettiest I think I've ever seen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. And the tartan bows. I mean, yes. how perfect. Is how it? perfect. There's a lot about the tweed industry and and um, yes, that's fascinating. Manufacturing and employing the local people yes, who are skilled workers. Sam is workers. there to um, to start up again a, a traditional yes, a traditional mill. Yeah, um, producing wool and cloth and clothing you really Amazing want to go visit and, and shop tweets. in that yes, too, you don't do. you? You oh do. and the other thing i absolutely loved was lucy has this thing about badadass um bath. Yes. <laughs> bubble bath because her, her dad used to use yes. it and i must say it's our oh yeah favorite. we love we badadass, love badadass. <laughs> yes. we love the scent of it it is pie yeah. so i'm with lucy on that yes yeah there are brilliant shopping scenes there are all through the when book. he goes and he buys for carry the pet clothes yeah i mean there is a theme of men buying women paintings yes. a little <laughs> veteran that's true <laughs> I've never had, had anyone do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we've missed out we on this one. Have. But I love the way that Rosamund Pilcher, always the characters that you're meant to like yes. the most and do, are always not only generous spirited, but they in fact are mm. as yeah. generous as they can be in yes. terms of material things yes. as well. Even if it's very simple gifts, Lucy delights in buying Elfrida some special lilies yes, for Christmas. Yeah, six lilies, Targazer yes. lilies. Yes. And with a big pink bow. I thought yes. that was lovely. I thought that was lovely too. And, and all her, her joy in going and choosing these gifts for people yes. and Sam himself who does some amazing Christmas yes. shopping. I'd yes. like Sam to come and stay for Christmas. <laughs> he was perfect, yes, that way. He but was. Each gift was so thoughtful. And her yes. characters, like, they're the sort that turn up they turn up with flowers and wine and a gift yes, for the hostess, they do. this type of thing. I thought it was a really interesting contrast at the start of the book when Sam goes to stay with friends of his yes. in London and he goes out and he buys beautiful flowers for the wife mm. and he buys, I think, some wine, champagne and cognac, whiskey or some something. Champagne and cognac yes, or whiskey. For, yeah. for his male friend, the mm. husband... And so they're both delighted with those gifts, and he's been very generous. Yeah. But then they have an rather a well, a rather unwelcome visitor who also comes to call. Yes. Not such a nice character, selfish and vain and yes. greedy old man. <laughs> yeah. And he turns up with a modest box of after eights. <laughs> That you almost wonder if he's had a couple yes. surreptitiously. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> he'd be sought to. Yes, yes. And I love the way though that Rosamund Pilcher always does that. Like her, her lovable characters are always welcoming. They're always hospitable. They're yeah. always generous with their time and attention as well as their gifts. Absolutely. And they always give the most. That whatever their budget, their income, their circumstances yeah. allow, and she's so good on the, the, her breakfasts. Yes. Always, there's always <laughs> coffee or tea. Ooh. There's always sausages and bacon. I know, <laughs> I know. The breakfast yes. they bake yes. every morning in yes. Scotland just sound amazing. And toast, of course. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, she's always so good at describing food. She I is love that wonderful. In her books. She really does almost menus. You know what yes. they're going to eat, and it's always just right, yes. isn't it? Yes. Yes, I wanted to read a little mm. bit about Rosamond Pilcher from. Oh yes. yes, we've got a couple of lovely books that I would yes. really recommend. This one's Christmas 
with Rosamund Pilcher. Yes. And we also have the one called uh, the, the World. Yeah, the World of Rosamund Pilcher, which shows a lot of where she yeah. lived in Scotland, yeah. actually. It does. Which is really interesting They're to look at. They're definitely worth picking after up. Reading Winter Solstice. Yeah. Um, and what I find really interesting um, is that it surprised me a little bit when I read this one. So I'll <laughs> share a little bit with you. Rosamund Pilcher doesn't really care much for sweets and baking is not exactly her cup of tea, but she makes an exception during the Christmas season. I love the scent of scones and mince pies as it wafts through the house. Besides, the smell usually draws the whole family to the kitchen and we share this warm and cosy feeling. The kitchen in the spacious house near Dundee in Scotland, that must have been mm. um, where she lived, has plenty of room both for cooking and eating. It is comfortably warm even on the coldest days thanks to the Arga, the typically British gas-fired stove which is actually more an oven whose fire is never allowed to die, die down in the winter. When baking, Rosamond usually follows old family recipes that have been handed down from generation to generation. Among her favourites are Scottish specialties like drop scones or oat cakes. She stores the biscuits in large tins which she keeps on the dresser, the large old sideboard in her kitchen. They are there for anyone to help themselves and usually the tins are empty fairly quickly, says the author. Whenever guests are invited for tea, the supply must be replenished. Sometimes she finds this a bit laborious, as we know baking is not her most favourite pastime, but then everyone gathers in the kitchen again. There's the sweet smell of scones. The um, Argo excludes its crozy warmth. When I gladly begin to bake and actually enjoy it, says Rosamond, then I know it will soon be Christmas. And it follows with, her recipe for scones, which I think is lovely. That is lovely and perfect for winter solstice again yes. to make that scone recipe because Carrie, of course, she's always makes making scones. Scones and um, Sir James something something who comes to who visit, comes to yes, visit to, to assess the painting. Eat yes. six of them. She does so so they're clearly scones. good. <laughs> <laughs> she has a tip here, Rosamond Pilcher. She oh. says a small glass, such as the sherry glass is ideal to cut out the scones. <laughs> I should love approve that. of you. you. You cut out the glass, your mince pies, don't I you? Do. So. I do. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. But one thing I also love about what she does is she writes about families in a really interesting way. She does. Oh my goodness, yes. we had some real drama here we did. this afternoon. You might have been able to just hear it at the end before we got interrupted by a fire alarm, had the firemen out, everything. Fortunately, yes. everything's fine. Yes. But what an afternoon. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I had just been saying that I think that Rosalind Pilcher is amazing at doing families. She really not, is. Not only at the difficulties you sometimes have in families, yeah. siblings that don't get on, or yes. some tensions in relationships, but also about the family you make for yourself. She's from brilliant friends. at that, isn't she? She really is, and mm. I feel that she does that in winter solstice. Very much. They create their own family. They do. And the only familiar relationship that's um, sort of by blood is um, between... Carrie and Elfrida, but they're like distant cousins or yes, something, aren't they? Yes, distant cousins. Mm, mm. And of course, Carrie is Lucy's aunt. Yes, so that's the yes, closest that's relationship. True, that's true. Yes. Yeah. But it is really well done. But it's quite a bit later now today. Yes. <laughs> Should we're we, just going to wrap we're up. We're going to have to have this cup. Tea is stone cold. It is going to make another cup. cup. <laughs> Maybe cut into the fruit cake. Yes, I think we deserve it. I think we do too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you for bearing but, with us. Yes, thank yeah. you for bearing with us. Now, this also leads me on to say that we're going to be on hiatus from the book club for a while. We might try and bring it back in the spring or summer. We're yeah. not sure. But essentially, we're going into very busy period we both want to work on things of our own that hopefully we might be sharing more too for yeah. all of you down the line but we're having to 
cut down a little bit we are what we're on, doing on, yes we are we're a bit overextended we right are, now yes so um we're having taking a break from the book club for a while but of course as always i'll be giving lots of reading recommendations so will mum every week with yes. tea reads or yes. tea sharing yeah and you are always books. you're always doing what every month you're reading too so, yes exactly yeah. so don't worry still lots of book recommendations yeah. but a break from the actual book club, club for a bit um but thank you so much for everyone who has joined in with it so far yes. and i hope you enjoyed winter solstice do let us know in the comments if this was a reread for you or an introduction to rosamund pilcher and what you thought of the book we'd love to know we will be back, I think, with one more video, yes. barring hopefully any more dramas. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. Yes. <laughs> but we should be back with one more video before Christmas. Yes. Which I'm excited about. So we will really? see you once more before then. But I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for watching. Yes. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face. It pops up on the screen. And do give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. But yes, thanks so much again and see you again soon. Bye. Bye, -bye.